It's only right that we start off this video with Disney's legendary character who pretty much paved the way for all the fairy tales to come, Mickey Mouse. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. Now the Little Mermaid is pretty perfect as is, but seeing her Disney friends make an appearance has made it all that more awesome. Which to be honest, I didn't even think was possible. Check out this clip of King Triton's entrance to the Little Mermaid. Were you guys able to spot Mickey? Let's slow it down and try one more time. Now we clearly see Mickey with his best friends, Donald and Goofy, right by his side. If you got that one on your own, then good job because you are definitely an easter egg hunting pro. But I can totally bet that you did not notice this other character in the scene. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. Don't believe me? Check it out guys. This was definitely a bold move on the side of Disney animators since they didn't go on to get the rights to the Muppet Show until the year 2004. That is a whole 15 years later. It's a good thing that the Disney fans did not have the technology we do today or that could have been a sticky situation for Disney. If you were one of the eager fans who stuck around after the credits started to roll for Finding Nemo, you may have noticed our favorite one-eyed monster, Mike Wazowski, swimming across your screen and taking a look right at the camera as he snorkeled by. This is a clear sign that our pals Nemo and Mike both live in the same connected world. I'm watching you, Wazowski. For a tale as old as time, it sure has quite a bit in common with a jungle adventure, which doesn't take place until 10 years after Belle's Beauty and the Beast. So, um, what are you going to call it? I'm going to call him Tarzan. In 1999, the movie Tarzan came out, and it didn't take much for fans to realize these hints that the Beauty and the Beast and Tarzan were somehow related. Like the lyrics say, two worlds, one family. This is probably a lot more literal than people realize since we have many reasons to believe that Jane is Belle's great, great, great granddaughter. Jane certainly seems to have the same style as Belle, and don't even get me started on their attraction for big, brave, and beastly men. If that isn't enough to connect the two, how about the fact that we see Mrs. Potts and Chip make an appearance? This could definitely have been a tea set that Belle and her family kept throughout the generations. This could definitely be a great reminder for future generations that being mean to old ladies who come knocking on your door has its consequences. The theory that Pinocchio and Princess and the Frog are connected is tied together by something oh so magical, the brightest star in the night sky. Now you might have heard of this star not only in the two connected movies, but some other movies as well. I'll give you guys one hint, it also starts with the letter P. This movie is none other than Peter Pan. There it is, Wendy. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. So where exactly did we see this star? For starters, in Pinocchio we see Geppetto, who is Pinocchio's father, wish with all his might on the brightest star in the night sky in hopes that one day Pinocchio might become a real boy. Lucky for Geppetto, the star turns into the blue fairy who hears his wish and eventually grants it. In The Princess and the Frog, we see Ray, the ever so romantic firefly who ends up leading Tiana and Naveen to Mama Odie. We also catch him constantly talking to the evening star. Ray, of course, thinks that this star is a firefly just like himself, so he falls in love with it and even ends up giving it a name, Evangeline. At the end of the movie, we see that Ray's wish to pass on and be with Evangeline is finally granted. Not only was this a beautiful moment, but it is also the second time that we see the night star grant a wish. And finally, we have Peter Pan, where the night star plays perhaps the largest role. It helps Peter Pan, Wendy, and the rest of the gang fly back to Neverland. Now seeing as Princess and the Frog is all about things not really appearing as they truly are, would it be too far-fetched to think that Ray was in fact speaking to his love Evangeline? Who knows guys, maybe in some faraway part of the Disney universe, Ray is actually a prince himself who gets his own happily ever after. Ugh, oh, wouldn't that be romantic? Both Moana and Lilo from Lilo and Stitch are set in very similar tropical settings. Moana is from the Polynesian Islands and Lilo is from Hawaii. Many Disney fans were quick to point out this easter egg of Moana sheltering a baby turtle with a leaf and helping it get into the water. Now we see this same scene after the end credits in Lilo and Stitch. Now is this easter egg enough to connect the two storylines together? Probably not. But this might be. Check out this photo of David, Nani's friend from Lilo and Stitch. Notice anything peculiar? The necklace he's wearing is pretty identical to Maui's fish hook, isn't it? 
But what exactly does that mean and how did David get his hands on a demigod's magic staff? The answer is a peanut butter eating tropical fish called Pudge, who by the way, also controls the weather. I'm late because I had to go to the store and get peanut butter because all we have is, is Dig It Duda! Lilo, Lilo, why is this so important? Pudge controls the weather. Now didn't Maui sing about being able to lasso the sun to stretch our days and bring us fun? And why would Lilo want Maui to keep the sun around? The reason is actually very sad. Now as some of you might remember, Lilo's parents were said to have died in a car crash on a rainy night. Now is it possible that because Maui wasn't properly able to do his job and protect the people of Hawaii, the other gods decided that he should be turned into a fish until they decided otherwise? Now it could explain a lot since David is definitely shown as a great surfer as he wears his necklace. With everything else we've talked about today, this theory does not seem too far-fetched. Thank you for watching guys and that is the end of our video and all I've got for you today. Now I want to know of any other connections that you guys have made so let me know in the comments section below. I am always on the lookout for the next big Disney scoop so be sure to get creative. Now as always don't forget to like, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram and I'll see you next time on The Things.